Unfortunately, after 8 videos, we've run out of tips and nah, who am I kidding, I've got more for you. You know what to do. If you enjoy our series here on GameSpot, hit that like button. We appreciate it. We've got some more goodies for you today, so here we go. Dubious food is often not very useful, recovering only a quarter of a heart, maybe one heart at most. But hearty lizards ignore this rule, and if you cook 5 of them, it actually makes a meal that's not completely terrible, healing up a whopping 20 hearts. Quince is a pretty interesting NPC. He's one of the few Hylians outside of Gerudo Desert who actually reacts differently to your Gerudo outfit, as he'll hit on you for a second until he realizes that you're a guy. Another interesting fact is that his dog is the only named dog that we know of in the entire game. His name is Sadie. And you should talk to Quince to hear a story about how they met. It's very wholesome. You may have heard of the term smuggling before, a way for Link to hold things he's not supposed to. What you might not know is how many ways to smuggle have been found so far, with common ones such as weapon and bow smuggling, but even more such as shield, bomb, arrow, item hold, and item lift smuggling. Along with arrow smuggling, people have found one of the wildest visual and audio bugs in the game, called active arrow smuggling. It does this. There's a hidden move that's fairly dangerous to pull off in combat because of its long animation, called hopback striking. You may have done it by accident before. By holding ZL, then pressing attack and backflip at the same time, you'll do a special hopback then auto jump attack. But this can be used to weirdly weave right through the entirety of a sword Lionel's triple slash attack. Did you know that Stalnox eyes can be transferred between each other? By stealing one eyeball, then carrying it to another Stalnox, knocking out their eye will cause that Stalnox to pick up the closest eyeball to it, even if it's one of its neighbor's eyeballs. Also, Stalnox have friendly fire on against their own eyes, and can damage themselves while stomping, killing themselves for you. Not the sharpest tool in the shed, as they say. You need 4 bundles of wood to create an updraft, but you only need 3 of the campfires to keep the updraft. And did you know a burning wood fence or spike can substitute as one campfire each when fueling an updraft? Also, preset campfires are different from your normal campfire. Unlike a normal campfire, they still stay lit after resting. If you place an octo balloon at the very tip of a weapon, then wait for it to float upright, then cut off the balloon string, you can make the weapon stay completely vertical on their own, whenever you want. And yes, everyone knows about that guardian scout spear that stays upright too. But did you also know that enemies need to reach the handle of the weapon in order to pick it up? If weapons are flipped right side up, enemies can grab them just fine. But if they're flipped upside down, the handle is too high for them to reach. There's a group of friends at the Gerudo horse stables whose names are Sesame, Olaf, Flaxel, Canolo, and Palm. These are of course a reference to real world oils. Sesame, Olive, Flax, Canola, and Palm oil. If you watch closely, you can catch crabs doing a cute little dance. I swear I hear something in the background. All of the basic horse equipment in the game is made by Epona Company, serving Hyrule for more than 150 years. Their logo can be seen on the Sanadin Park Ruins statue. Any longtime Zelda player knows of the infamous enemy Beemos, who are known for their robot eyes that shoot lasers at Link. But did you know they're actually in Breath of the Wild? Unfortunately, it's just this thing right here. Yeah, not the most exciting thing, but it is cool to know that the Vemos is technically and officially in the game. For people who aren't too versed in the speedrunning community, there are some really, um, interesting category extensions for Breath of the Wild, also known as meme runs. Such as Monkey% percent, where you eat a banana as fast as possible after hearing a monkey in the jungle, throwing a rake in the lake as fast as possible, and my personal favorite run, but a dog, dog with the butter on him percent, with the goal of putting butter on a dog as fast as possible. Yes, these are real, and yes, there are leaderboards for them. The rocks strewn around the Master Sword pedestal aren't just for decoration. Each rock represents something. The main three corners of the Triforce represent the goddesses of Hyrule, Din, Nehru, and Feyor. The rocks on the outer ring represent the Gerudo, Hylians, 
Zora, Shika, Kokiri, and the Goron races. Regular Choo Choo jellies have a secret property you may not have noticed. They actually have a small physical splash that's not present in any of the elemental versions. This mechanic is amplified during dash attacks to launch yourself into the air and get bullet time, called jelly bouncing. This is not exclusive to Link though. While there are many ways to push and launch enemies in Breath of the Wild, there hasn't been a way to forcefully launch a Lionel. And no, its jumping attack doesn't count. Well, a way to launch Lionels has finally been found, by using one tiny choo-choo jelly. Have you ever seen a Wiz robe without its cloak on? Well, here you go. You're welcome, enjoy your nightmares. Keys can be distracted by noises just like any other enemy. Arrow shots and bombs will attract them. Oil lanterns from the Bokoblin skull camps can be torn down and saved, but they are extremely fragile. It's also possible to put out the fire and reignite it, as long as you don't hit it directly. Some players may already know about a visual glitch that removes cell shading to show the lower plastic shaders in Breath of the Wild, such as the popular one at the Bridge of Hylia and other places. But these were always very limited in their angles and their space to move around. But if you glitch into the Spring of Courage early, the mossy skin around the non-existing shrine gives you the biggest plastic shader in the game. And you can do and see many things without cell shading. This meat looks very, uh, rubbery. If you're a newer player and are a bit intimidated by all the advanced launch techniques out there, I've got an easy one for you. If you find any wooden box out in the overworld, put a square bomb on one corner of the box, then stand on the opposite corner. Then simply detonate the bomb. This is called a Kibako launch, also known as a wooden box launch. Enemies with wooden shields can block shock arrows easily, but there's a nifty trick that you can still pull off with shock arrows. If you shoot the ground in front of the enemy with a shock arrow, you're able to still conduct and shock enemies directly from the ground, without needing to shoot them directly. Here's a bonus fun fact about my outfit. Since 2017, most people who have followed me think this clothing set is based off of Assassin's Creed protagonist Altair, but it's actually inspired by my main character and color set in Blaze Blue, Kao Kaka. And that's a wrap! If you continue to enjoy this series, check out our Breath of the Wild Expert Series playlist with tons of Breath of the Wild tidbits that you never knew about. And for everything else gaming, stay tuned right here on GameSpot.